Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station W1GV and the website sciencewriter.net with a little discussion for you of open wire antennas, open wire antenna theory in particular, the dipole fed with balanced line, a balanced antenna. Perhaps one of the oldest, well, perhaps the oldest, aside from the simple end fed wire, the oldest antenna in ham radio repertoire. And here is the basic way that it is set up two lengths of wire, <coughs> equal, equal in length, equally long, fed with an open wire line, parallel wire line, with spacers or some other low loss dielectric. A typical line for that purpose is called ladder line. If you've ever seen it, you'll know why. <clears throat> Simply two wires parallel to each other, separated every six or eight or 12 inches by polyethylene spacers anywhere from 2 to 6 inches. That would be about 5 to 15 centimeters apart. Typical length for these uh, elements is maybe on the order of 20 meters or about 66 feet. But it can vary considerably. On the short wave or amateur radio bands, this is an excellent antenna design. Now, the whole idea behind this was basically, here's where your transmitter is. You have a special antenna tuning network that tunes a balanced wire line so that the currents in these two parallel wires at every point along the line are running equally intense but opposite in direction. So you get basically a current that flows contrarywise to itself in the two elements or the two <coughs> sides of this transmission line. Then the current flows back and forth, back and forth in this antenna and results in radiation of the signals into space. Radiation from the antenna element, yes, but from the line, no. The reason you don't get any radiation from that line, assuming that it's continuously connected, is that at every point along this line, the radio frequency current flows in exactly the opposite direction in one wire as compared to the other and with equal intensity. So they cancel each other out everywhere in space along this line. The electromagnetic field from the right-hand wire and the electromagnetic field from the left-hand wire cancel each other out. Now you can also think of this entire system as just one great big dipole connected to the transmitter, part of which is folded on itself and that is the transmission line right there. So it really you can make this transmission line just about any length and this wire as long as it's a significant fraction of a wavelength preferably a half wavelength or more at the lowest frequency on which you want to operate. So if you want to operate 80 through 10 meters for example you would use 20 meters if you wanted to run 160 through 10 meters, then each wire would be 40 meters long or about 132 feet long. And so the total length of this thing would be about, what is that, about 264 feet? A long antenna indeed. <clears throat> Ideally, the two wires have to be equally long equally 
distant from relative obstructions like trees, the earth, buildings, and everything, ideally as high as you can get it up in the air. And if you have a very simple antenna just like that, then you can operate it and it'll always work. Now you'll have different variable radiation patterns coming off of this wire. On 160 meters, this would be a half wave dipole, but on 80 meters, it would operate as two half waves in phase. And on other bands, it would operate in much more complicated ways and produce complicated radiation patterns. But in the olden days of radio, people didn't worry much about those things, nor did they ever really worry about the standing wave ratio, or SWR. <clears throat> they didn't care. It didn't matter, because if you have a low loss line, then high standing wave ratios aren't going to really do any harm. They may create high current points called current loops and high voltage points called voltage loops, which can get pretty extreme if you're running the legal limit of amateur radio power and you happen to end up with a voltage loop near your feed point or a current loop near your feed point. Certain links of this line, your transmatch or your antenna tuner might not handle. Then you just add a little bit of line or take away a little bit of line until you get something that you can match. But basically, this is just a symmetrical antenna, the simplest possible design. You simply don't worry about things like SWR, and you don't worry about the radiation pattern. You want it to be balanced. You want it to be a straight length of wire. You want the feed line to be well designed. You want the wire to be well away from any obstructions and as high up in the air as you can get it. And it's that simple, really. It's that simple. It has worked for over a hundred years. And it'll probably work for a hundred more years to come, at least as long as ham radio remains legal. Stan Jibalisco, Whiskey One Golf Victor, signing off for now. 73 and so long.